There's any? Ooh. <clears throat> We're not at this point. I'm not even sure if there's squirrels. squirrels. Nope. That's okay. Yeah. Are they mice? You or can rats? tell already. These are rats. Yeah. Okay. So where did can you find you them? Um, some people brought them to. I work at Animal Services. Oh, um, okay. So right. some people brought them to us. They said they found them at the Sunnies on Waldo. Okay. They they just said it was under their van, so I have no clue where in the parking oh, lot the their nest, van was. Yeah, the nest might have been in their engine. Oh, uh, yeah, these are, these are been. probably black rats. So, uh, and they commonly build nests there. Yeah, so especially if it's parked for any length of time. We actually have people not part of our group because we only do wildlife, but we have people that we know. We have a kind of a running list that take in odd things like this okay so i will contact her and see if she's willing to take uh how many baby There's rats five. do we have five baby rats yes, and the way to tell the difference <clears throat> is their size these are i'm assuming yeah, they looked really small I'm like, I well no these are i'm saying they're big and yeah. that's why i think they're rats as opposed oh. to mice um, okay. because mice would be this big probably when they're starting to get their fur um I can't, I'm not absolutely sure, but I think yeah. they're, I think the rats. And the other way to tell that they're not gray squirrels is they have pink nails. Oh. So they have little pink nails. What color would a squirrel's gray. nails be? Gray? Gray, gray nails. Huh. When they're born, they're gray nails. Never do that. They do have a little bit different shape head, but the nails are a dead giveaway. And, um, now this is about the size... This is a little bigger than a newborn flying squirrel. And that's when I first, when you opened the box, I thought, oh, we got flying squirrels. Okay. And, but no, because as you can see, their little limbs don't have extra skin. They don't have okay. that skin that would go from their elbow to their knee. And um, like if you took a flying squirrel and you kind of spread out his little legs like that, you'd see all this extra skin between. Oh, so cool. this is this is kind of what a flying squirrel looks like, but with, with wings. With the, <laughs> okay. So. Learn something new every day. So yes. Anyway. Yeah, they have a little bit of formula, I mean milk, mother's milk in their stomach. You can see oh. their stomach is, it fills um, from left to right. So when they're feeding, you'll see a, a nice white line start across the stomach. And when they're full, it goes to the other side. Oh, nice. So yeah, when they don't have fur, you can, it's easy to tell how, when they're full that are taking in everything that we're getting at these drop-offs is going to our four experienced people. They're triaging them, they're stabilizing them, they're evaluating them and getting them in groups. And then after the training tonight, everybody who signs up to be in the foster program will be getting their squirrels. And so then we're, we're unloading our experienced people so that any new ones that came in will go to them for triage and evaluation very quickly. Can you train them to stay off of bird feeders? Sorry, can't do that. <laughs> They're too smart. <laughs> too persistent, that's for sure. Oh, yes. This is an Eastern Grey. Yep, it's a seven week old little girl. And she's uh, got no injuries. And the woman that found her, she hydrated her and has been feeding her. So she's in good shape compared to some of the ones we've gotten in. And so this is presumably releasable. Oh, yes. At whatever point you every determine that it's at near six, full strength and six months old. Oh, they're released at six months. That's when they have all their faculties. You might have said how old you think this one is. Already. Seven weeks. Seven weeks, right? Okay. Yeah. So you're gonna have to keep it for a while, or somebody. Yes. One so of your this surrogates. is yes. This is actually a nursing baby, supposed to be solely in the nest. Never leaves the nest at this age. Doesn't even have all its teeth. So not even thinking about. You know, they may be tasting things, but they're not even thinking about eating any kind of solids. Um, when they, their first solid food that they probably will nibble on is the bark on the limbs right outside their nest. And um, they do not even start consuming food until they're nine to 10 weeks old. So everything we've gotten in has been a nursing baby, everything. They have, um, they do this a little younger, but they can curl their tail over their back like a, like a big squirrel. Look at you cutie. That makes them, it's very cute. So these are actually getting close. They're about halfway to opening their eyes. Uh, they open their eyes from seven to 10 days. And then they are eating solid food at about, they're still nursing, but eating solid food at about two weeks. And then they're totally independent from the mother at five weeks old. They're gone out of the nest. The mom's off having other babies and uh, at five weeks. five weeks. What's the story with these two? 
Uh, this came through a veterinary office, so we don't have the, um, we haven't gotten the information of um, where they were found. But probably, since their nest is a shallow depression, two to three inches deep, lined with the mother's fur in tall grass or dense bushes or vines, they probably came across them as they were cleaning up their yard. The first rabbits we actually got in from the storm were um, in a flooded area and they had been flooded out of their nest and they were about the same age actually. So you got to like our front desk lady heard the message when she tried to call the main number and she was like you need to get them there before too. <laughs> well and that's the thing too is uh, I went I spoke with emergency management before the storm as we were planning for this and talked to them about communication I said I need to know and be able to plan how we're going to be communicating during this storm because we weren't sure how bad it was going to be. Yeah, you don't know. Cell phones being knocked out or anything. Or... And they said, well, we don't really use radio stations that much anymore. We depend on Facebook. I was like, really? Okay. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I can do that. So that's what we started doing, heavily emphasizing, you know, all of our posting on Facebook. Then we changed the greeting every day on our phone. Okay. So the people calling in. And then also we connected with WUFT, which has been great. They came out and interviewed oh, nice. us. They have been uh, broadcasting stories. They've been keeping track of, um, of the drop-offs as well on their Facebook. So it's been really cool. good working with uh, WUFT on that as well. Nice. Yeah. That's good. I'm glad the message is getting out there so everyone can yeah. get them here appropriately. Yeah. So I think it was about... Maybe about two or three weeks ago, a lady brought in a juvenile squirrel to us, and he was kind of cold and dehydrated. I brought him in, put him on the heating pad, and I gave him some fluids, and mm -hmm. I was able to get him to one of your fosters the next day. Mm -hmm. So, yep. and we um, we are still expecting squirrels that are in, baby squirrels that are impacted from the storm in the next few days. Uh, just because we only get a couple in today. That doesn't mean that it's over. Yeah, so. especially, you, I mean, the weather still hasn't completely cleared up also, yet. Also, people too. are still cleaning up y their yards. We yeah. have tree people tr cutting down trees and clearing debris. Yeah. These animals are still going to be found, and they're probably going to be in worse shape. And so we really want to make sure that we continue having these drop-offs. When it gets really light, we're going to switch back to our phone, normal phone, leave a message, okay. and we'll, we'll coordinate. Um, probably Monday. I'm thinking Monday we'll go back to our normal routine and not okay. have drop-offs and then people don't have to wait as long to get them in. It's just that we were expecting 500 animals and we could not deal with 500 calls. You yeah. got, you, and when <laughs> you got, you probably got close to 500. I mean, you're talking by about 250 end, squirrels yes. alone. Yes, by, yeah. and, and with the other animals we're getting in as well. well so um, tell, tell me about that. All right, so I saw you on in the parking lot here on saturday you were starting to prepare it mm -hmm. might have been friday mm -hmm. friday and uh you were already like in full speed in your phone i was i talked to you for three minutes and your phone rang probably five times yes oh wow and that probably never stopped for yeah. until what did it finally start letting off on like wednesday or well has that's it what we did is that we changed the greeting and the post on facebook we started the facebook post <clears throat> We changed it to, if you found a baby squirrel, do not leave a message. Yeah. And I had to basically turn my phone off. <laughs> because they were, and, but the phone was busy, you know, constantly. So people were still trying to call in as it was busy. So it set, the message says, if you find anything other than a baby squirrel, leave a message. So I only had a few messages each day that I had to deal with, yeah. personally. Yeah. And then everybody else with baby squirrels, we just met them at the drop-offs. And it was very successful, very efficient. Um, it worked well. We learned how to do this in 2000. 2004 with the back-to-back -back hurricanes and and it's still well we knew that the storm was going to impact us significantly um, the week before <clears throat> so on Friday we we started talking about it before Friday but then on Friday is when we started getting our materials because I knew businesses were going to close and things like that so we got it things the material we needed printed we had printed at Renaissance and <clears throat> We were getting all of the supplies together, everything we needed. We sent out emails to all of our volunteers how to um, prepare for the storm so that they would not be impacted dramatically and they could still work with us through the storm. So we made sure everybody was uh, prepped at their homes um, and if they were gonna be evacuated that to let us know. So we were taking care of our own first. And then, <clears throat> so we knew what was in place during the, the event. Um, <clears throat> 
so then on Friday we started making plans for how we were going to communicate, how we were going to set up um, and, and time, kind of a timeline of when this was all going to happen. Sunday was when the phone started ringing and we started getting animals in and mostly baby squirrels. Were you able to actually go out into the field on Sunday or did you have to wait that out? Oh no, I was on the road every day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, through the night on Sunday? Yep. Well, I did get some sleep. Yes. You, did. you got a little bit of sleep on Sunday night. <laughs> yes. I didn't yes. get much sleep on Sunday night, but I didn't have to go out. Yeah, it was late. Here. It was like 2 a.m. And I was like, okay, there's nothing more I can do. I'm going to bed because in the morning, I don't know what I'm going to be waking up to. So, um, and I was surprised, pleasantly surprised that we weren't impacted more. But I had been watching the weather and I knew I, I was telling everybody, it's not going to be as bad as you think. Right. We are actually in a very good po position. It, yeah in Gainesville right. so um, so I, I you had mostly squirrels but but in terms of bird life what did you see come in well we had baby or other wildlife yeah baby doves and ground doves because doves. <clears throat> that's the only really bird that's breeding right now uh, we had some hawks come in that were kind of bashed around wind wise um, red shoulders red, tails, red shoulders and a red tail any kites we I'm trying to think um, no kites. Eagles? No eagles. I think they, eagles, no. They yeah, do. they're heavy bodied and they just hunker down and, yeah, yeah. and um, that kind of thing. But we did get two sooty turns. Right. We had an immature and a, uh, an adult that were blown in from the Gulf because of, we're assuming from the Gulf because of the direction of the wind and yeah. where the hurricane was. These were Gulf birds and Sorry. the immature was very damaged had internal damage and very bruised and um hard. we were unable to stabilize that one but the very adult fast. yes yeah. and the adult is doing well great it has a head injury and an eye injury so we're just trying to get him a little fattened up mm -hmm. and stable before we then assess the full extent of the eye injury yeah. so we're not sure if he's going to be visual or not but he's doing great and um, it's fun to get those unique animals right, right, right. and we never really see those kind of things. Right. But that's why we do all the common stuff because when we do, we understand how to handle the common birds and animals. When something unique like that comes in, we know what we're Apply doing. Apply your skills. Yeah. We did get a, a gopher tortoise, but, and it might've been moving because of the storm, but it moved into an area where there was a dog and it got chewed up. So. <laughs> So that people think cats are rough on wildlife. Oh, yeah. Dogs. Well, dogs and gopher tortoises yeah, is right. the big problem. Yeah, I guess a cat and a gopher tortoise might not be. Not, not that big a deal. Um, and turtles, turtles and gopher tortoises are cars yeah, are, of yeah. course, the biggest thing with, um, with that. But yeah, dogs and cats and uh, windows are a big threat. Not to gopher tortoises. To, no, <laughs> <laughs> to wildlife, to wildlife in general. Right. Um, so, so things started coming in sooner than we expected. So we had to kind of reassess what we were doing and we've been reassessing every single day because when we realized the calls were coming in hot and heavy on Sunday, we were only, ex we weren't expecting anything till Tuesday morning. And I thought, oh, I have plenty of time to get this stuff together, get organized, and I can actually relax a little before the, the big onslaught. No, no, no. We didn't relax at all. So Sunday, it started hitting. We had to change our message, get on Facebook, start getting the word out. And um, we did have to focus down to three counties that we cover. We normally kind of count, sorry, we normally cover 11 counties. But when we have an event like this, an emergency, we have to go to our core counties because we that's where most of our animals are going to come from and we have to focus on those so it was Putnam, Alachua and Columbia County. The other counties we normally cover where we don't have as much transport you know availability of our volunteers those are the counties that actually have overlap from other rehabbers so we're kind of leaving that to them and then, but we have been in touch with, I've tried to contact every single rehabber that we overlap with. Some have gotten back with us and some have not. So we do coordinate that as well. But back on Monday, we will be back to our full coverage. We'll be back on our normal phones and we'll be back on 11 counties. So, cause it'll be manageable for us at that time. 
but we get calls from Miami. We were getting, on Sunday, we were getting calls from Miami. 